This video is sponsored by Surfshark VPN. So a few weeks ago, I did a video called Renee Rapp and the Curse of the It Girl, where, you know, the new It Girl celebrity receives a lot of fan support for their quirky or outspoken personality until that support inevitably turns into backlash. And in that video, I briefly mentioned what I coined the curse of the it boy, which is something very different. And we're going to get into it today with a person who I consider to be the current it boy in pop culture and media, Jacob Elordi. Jacob got his first big break playing a character named Nate Jacobs in Euphoria, a show that is currently streaming on HBO Max if you haven't seen it. And speaking of streaming, there is a whole wide world of TV out there that you might not even know about that you can access with the help of a virtual private network. And that's why I want to briefly talk about today's wonderful sponsor, Surfshark VPN. Surfshark VPN lets you virtually travel the world with the tap of a finger. It's come in handy for me recently because I've tried to keep up with all the movies and TV shows for award season, and Surfshark allows me to get access to tons of streaming catalogs from a bunch of different countries, which makes it way easier to stay on top of it all. Surfshark also keeps you safe and private by covering up everything you do online. When your device connects to the internet, all that information is, in a way, blurred out or encrypted and anyone who tries to snoop on you won't be able to see what you're doing or where you're doing it from. Not only that, but Surfshark also has some really handy security features available, including real-time breach alerts and antivirus scans. And I am partnering with Surfshark to offer an exclusive deal to my viewers. Enter my coupon code Kayla says for an extra three months free, plus 83% off. Visit the link in the description down below to take advantage of this fantastic deal, and thank you so much to Surfshark VPN for sponsoring today's video. Okay, so as I mentioned, Jacob Elordi got his start in Euphoria, a show that I have a lot of opinions about, with showrunners I also have slightly more hostile opinions about. I always thought Jacob's portrayal of Nate was fine, because Nate is a fine character, but since Euphoria season 2, Jacob has taken on some more, let's say, mature roles, most recently portraying Elvis in Sofia Coppola's Priscilla, and acting alongside Barry Keoghan in Saltburn. Now that you have some basic background, let's explain what the curse of the It Boy is, is, why I believe Jacob Elordi is going through it right now, and why the normalization of this kind of toxic behavior from his fans is actively translating to real-world consequences. And to get into this, let's take a brief look back at what happened with the last Hollywood It Boy. So what are you? Are you the daddy of the internet? What's internet daddy? Me. Yeah, you are. Uh, internet daddy. Yeah. I'm still trying to figure it out. No, people are like obsessed by you being... There's Zaddy, there's Daddy. Um, daddy? Ooh, zaddy. Okay. With a Z. Pedro Pascal is my cool, slutty daddy. Oh! <laughs> yes. And then, I, I love wish. this one down here. Pedro Pascal is a biblically gorgeous man. I want to feed him grapes. I want to fan him with the front of a date palm from the forest of Lebanon. I want to find the alabaster vial of perfume oil that one woman broke for Jesus and comb it through his hair. <laughs> I love Pedro Pascal as much as the next mediocre white bitch does. It's a common trait among us all. However, I feel like people definitely got a little weird and carried away with the daddy meme. And if you don't know what that is, Pedro Pascal recently played two very prominent roles, uh, assuming the role of like a pseudo father figure. In The Mandalorian, he assumed the role of a father figure to Baby Yoda, otherwise known as Grogu. And in The Last of Us, uh, he plays a literal dad who loses his daughter and begins to form a relationship with another pseudo daughter named Ellie. And so from those two pieces of media spawned a meme because Pedro Pascal is a very conventionally attractive man of mostly women being like, oh my God, he's so daddy. He's so daddy coded. And for the most part, Pedro Pascal did lean into this. Uh, a lot of people would ask him about it in interviews like that Graham Norton clip that I just played and he would joke around with it, you know, but I think uh, after like the peak of The Last of Us, he got progressively more uncomfortable with total strangers and a lot of interviewers asking him about it rather than asking him about his work on these projects or his acting. And maybe you don't interpret it that way, but every time I saw him sort of like respond to the daddy meme or somebody calling him that, it seemed like he was acting very restrained in the sense that he didn't want to offend the person who was making a joke about it, but he wasn't exactly thrilled that people were calling him that over and over again. 
And you might see this as ultimately harmless because it's just, you know, people online making a cute joke about an actor they find attractive and he seemed to be leaning into it and understanding that it's a term that is meant affectionately. However, from this, I think it spawned like another weird subculture of people violating Pedro Pascal's boundaries in a lot of ways. And by uncomfortable boundaries, I mean the fact that because Pedro Pascal has never really come out and had like a public relationship or partner, a lot of people tend to speculate on his sexuality, whether or not he's secretly queer. And I just feel like people think that celebrities are exempt from this sort of really intense cross-examination being problematic, when in reality, it's just as creepy that you're doing it to a famous stranger as if you were doing it to somebody that you know or somewhat know in real life. And I've said this before, I generally don't care what you do or say in your weird little freak group chats, but strangers always calling him daddy or saying weirdly aggressively sexual things in his mentions. I do think it's a little dehumanizing. And I don't think anybody ever wants to frame it that way because it's targeted toward, you know, these often conventionally attractive leading man type figures in Hollywood. So, you know, what detriment is it really doing to them if people are a little horny in their mentions or overstepping their bounds from time to time. They're rich, famous, and attractive. You know, who cares about their feelings? Who gives a shit? Now, before we get into the next section of this video, I wanna say that this isn't to say that women don't also experience this type of sexualization. That's not what I'm saying at all. Obviously, Hollywood has a long and storied history of misogyny and improper and unrealistic beauty standards for women and women getting criticized for the amount of skin that they show on a red carpet or what they're doing in regards to their choices with their bodies or motherhood or plastic surgery, what have you. Women face a lot of that in Hollywood and in real life, obviously, so I'm not trying to say that like, ooh, these men have it so hard. In fact, what I'm saying is kind of the opposite. I feel like, you know, a lot of these conventionally attractive men in Hollywood don't have to face a lot of those other systemic barriers that, you know, their women counterparts often have to face. And so people kind of feel more comfortable assuming things about them or making inappropriate jokes uh, at their expense. And I think they're doing that because they're like, okay, well, it's these, you know, attractive, famous men. How badly are they going to feel about the comments that I make about their bodies? They're not gonna see it. They have all of this attainable wealth and resources. Like the least I should be able to do is be able to sexualize them without feeling bad about it. And I'm here to tell you that if you're doing that, you should probably feel bad about it. And sure, maybe you think I'm being prudish on this subject, and maybe I am, but if there's anything in this world, in this life, that is going to change your opinion, it's this tweet that went viral a couple weeks ago about Jacob Elordi. The style and vibe of a teenage boy being actively inworded by a family member. So yeah, this is probably actively the worst and the most deranged of all of the Jacob Elordi tweets that I've seen over the last year or so. But trust me when I say that there are hundreds of others like this. And you might argue that I'm being a prude, again, if it's not visibly appearing in their mentions and it doesn't matter what you say, these famous people are never going to see these words. But I don't know, it just gives me the ick to think that there are people out here talking about real life human beings this way. And if Jacob Elordi is aware of any of this going on online, he probably feels like he has to pretend to be cool with it because he probably would get a lot of pushback on social media if he spoke out against it in any meaningful capacity. I think it would be my own personal nightmare to try to move through this world and keep to myself while thousands of strangers online are sexualizing me and making comments on every part of my body. Like that sounds like a fucking nightmare and I don't understand how these famous people do it. I really don't. All of this to say that up until recently, Jacob Elordi has not publicly spoken out about this kind of intense sexualization from his fans and people on the internet. And I feel like, you know, why would he? Because he doesn't want to be seen as like not a team player or like not down with his fan base or unappreciative of the affection that they give him. I feel like Pedro Pascal was kind of in a similar situation where he might have been uncomfortable with the amount of sexualization he was receiving, but he didn't want to push back on his fans in any way. However, it got to a point this week for Jacob Elordi where somebody made an uncomfortable joke at his expense with him in the room 
and he decided to take action about it. So over the weekend, it was reported that Jacob Elordi was arrested for assaulting a radio host in Australia. And at first people were rightfully like, oh no, this is the fall of the Hollywood darling. He's secretly this violent sociopath. And then we learned a little bit more about the situation. According to Joshua Fox, who is a producer for the Jackie O show. And I don't know if you're from Australia, maybe you can fill us all in in the comments down below. Uh, I don't really have a frame of reference, but I guess these guys are like pretty sleazy and not well liked. And this producer approached Lordy and asked if he could give his bath water to Jackie O, who is the host of the show. And that is a reference to a spicy scene in Saltburn, if you're unaware. Apparently, Jacob got very aggressive in response to that question and backed Joshua Fox into a corner, asked him not to use the footage, which he initially agreed to, and then the host changed his mind, I guess, and that's when Jacob choked him out. As of recording this video, police are investigating the incident and Elordi has not publicly commented. And it seems like the tide has turned mostly in Jacob Elordi's favor on this one because that's a really creepy thing to ask a person in real life regardless of whether or not you're doing a sleazy radio show bit. And whatever, I'm not going to advocate handling your problems with physical intimidation or violence generally speaking if you can avoid it. However, what is absolutely stunning to me is that even after this story broke, people have still just been making the creepy fucking comments about him in the context of this situation. I want to try to do a bigger, more formal video about this eventually, but I feel like somewhere along the line, our generation, and when I say that, I mean Gen Z, I was born in 1998, I'm technically Gen Z, lost the ability to effectively communicate any kind of meaningful thought about sex or desire. And so it's kind of devolved into these two camps where like either people are super prudish and they don't want any kind of reference to sex or sex scenes in their media at all, or people are bypassing even sexualizing characters and instead have decided to constantly horny post and harass attractive celebrities in their DMs and in their mentions because they have no other way to let out their frustration. I also get that it's all too easy nowadays to put these celebrities on a metaphorical pedestal, to imagine that they are so far away from the rest of us because they have more power, capital, and influence, and therefore being critical or inappropriate at their expense is always punching up no matter what. But I don't know, if anything, the situation proves that these comments clearly get to Jacob Elordi in some capacity, and that the inherently explicit nature of a movie like Saltburn is probably making it worse for him. Ultimately, I'd like to know more about this whole story. I'd like to hear Jacob's side of the story, which I'm sure we'll get in some kind of statement in the coming days. But like, in the meantime, everybody just be normal, okay? It's a new year, new you. Let's just try being fucking normal. That's all for me today, you guys. Thank you so much for watching. Uh, I normally like to end these kinds of videos with like a random question. Sometimes it's like, what's your favorite candy? Other times it's like related to the video, uh, but I can't think of one. So I'm just going to encourage you all to start a fight about salt burn in the comments uh, because I feel like that happens a lot and sometimes it's kind of funny. So uh, whoever comments first about salt burn, like good or bad opinion, start a fight with them in the comment section down below and make it like as vicious as what possible. Are you doing? <laughs> What? Why would you do that? What do you mean? Are you kidding me? What do you mean? <laughs>